this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the iterable interface and we're going to look at implementing the iterable interface ourselves so that we can create a class, a collection class that you can loop over with a for each type loop. So in the last tutorial we looked at using um, using iterable collections with the for each kind of syntax and we're going to go one step further here and create our own iterable class. So I'm going to, as an example, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to call this, let's call this URL library. And I'll imagine that this is a class that can store a list of URLs, initially at least. So let's give this a private let's say linked list of strings. So I'm going to store a list of strings which will be URLs and I'll call this URLs and I'll set it equal to a new linked list of string. And I'll put the brackets in there and add the import for linked list. Now uh, I'll give this a constructor and uh, just for sort of demo purposes here really I'll just add some URLs here in the constructor but you could supply methods here if you want to to add URLs um, so that this class stores URLs that you pass to it for example let's say urls.add and I'll add http colon slash slash www.caveofprogramming.com that's my website and let's just have a couple more URLs here. I keep pressing the wrong characters on my keyboard because I've got two keyboards and I'm forever getting confused between them. Let's also have www.facebook.com forward slash cave of programming where you can find my Facebook page. And, uh, whoops. And I'll also add just one more. I'll add one website that I look at a lot coming from the UK which is news.bbc.co.uk okay now how can we um, make it so that you can iterate through this list using a for each loop when you create an object a URL library object here in the main program so let's just create one to start with equals new URL library and if I want to use for each to iterate over those URLs within this library here what I can do is I can say that the URL library implements iterable, which is an interface, of course. And because the URLs are strings here, I'm going to say that it implements iterable string. So the URL library itself is not going to be a template class. And I'm just going to say that it can only iterate through strings because it only stores strings. And these strings could be any object. It could be some custom object that you've created yourself. They don't have to be strings. So I'll add the import with Control shift o and let's look at this error here. And I'm going to go to Add Unimplemented Methods, like this. And that has added this public iterator method, which is the sole method of the iterable interface. And because I've said this is implementing iterable and I've used the string template parameter, this iterator here is an iterator over strings. And I have to return from here an iterator object. And the iterator object is an object that has the methods next, has next, and remove. And it's capable of basically pointing at each of your objects that you want to iterate over in turn. Now, the simplest way to implement this here, and we'll look at our kind of interesting refinement of this in a minute but the simplest thing to do is use the iterator that already exists in this linked list so here I could just say return urls dot iterator and that will return an iterator to the objects in this linked list and the whole point of that is that now I can say when I use the URL, URL library class and create an object from it I can say for string because this implements iterable string. For string URL in URL library, 
and I can say, whoops, if I could just hit the right key there, there we go. I can say sysl and url. So I can use a for each loop on objects of this class here, just because that class implements iterable. And if I run that, then I'll get my URLs. Now, why would you want to do that? And well, I, I suppose the answer is uh, you don't want to do it very often, but typically you want to do it. Um, well, it could just be a convenience thing like here. Maybe you just think it looks nice to be able to iterate directly over your object. Or it could be that you want to iterate over the objects you're storing in some kind of custom order um, that this kind of the iterator of your list or whatever it is doesn't support. Or it could be even that there is just no iterator. You're, you're either storing the objects in a way that there's no ready-made iterator for them. Or you might even um, want to fetch these objects somewhere as you're iterating through them. And let's take a look at an example of that latter case here, where you're actually fetching the objects you want to iterate through um, as you iterate through them. So let's comment this out, actually. And what I'm, what I'm about to show you is a kind of a demo of a very particular case, um, just to show you kind of what kind of use, for example, you might want to put this to. And I'm going to implement my... Um, iterator method again here. So I've got my method that returns an iterator and now I'm going to create my own iterator. So not only am I going to implement iterable here, I'm also going to create implement iterable and I'm actually going to download these web pages as I go through the URLs as I iterate through them so that here in my main program I can actually get HTML from the downloaded websites as I iterate through them. So to do that, I, um, I'm going to create an inner, inner class here, because if I create an inner class, it will still have access to this URLs field. And if I created a separate class to implement iterator, then I could also do that, and I could just pass these URLs in its constructor, for example. But here, what I'll do is I'll just say private Let's call this URL iterator. And I'll say um, this is, this implements iterator. And because the fact that it implements iterator means I can return it from my iterator method. And I need an iterator over strings here because I've said that this class URL library implements iterable of um, the string type. So here I'm going to say implements iterator string and I'm going to return the HTML of my websites as strings. So here's my iterator class and let's just um, add the import there. Actually I think I've already got the import. Um, I need to say private class actually. Here we go. So private class URL, URL iterator. Quite odd to say that. Implement iterator of string. And now if I click on this error message here and add an unimplemented methods. Now I need to implement the various methods that iterator has. Now I could throw some kind of um, uh, unimplemented exception. I forget the exact name here for remove. Or I could supply a remove method. Let's just supply a remove method and let's say URLs. In fact, before I do that, I need to have some notion of where this iterator is positioned um, in these URLs, like which URL is this pointing at at the moment? Because an iterator is always, uh, loosely speaking, it's pointing at an object in some sense. So let's have an index here. Let's say private int index, and I'll set it equal to naught to start with, although the initialization is superfluous because a private member field of the type int would be initialized to naught by default anyway. But just for clarity, I'll set this equal to naught. And now if the user calls remove, I'll just say urls.remove and I'll use the remove method that takes an int argument of linked list and I'll remove the, um, the URL that the, my iterator here, this iterator, is currently pointing at.
Now the two really interesting methods here are has next and next. Has next will have to return true if there's another URL or another website to iterate through and false if there isn't. So let's say as long as the iterate as long as the index here is less than three, well it's less than the size of the number of URLs that I've got in this linked list, then there is another one to look at. So um, say I've got three URLs in my list here, they will be numbered 0, 1 and 2 and I can retrieve them with this index 0, 1, 2 and as long as this index is less than 3 then there is another URL that I can look at after the current one. So let's just say return index is less than URLs.size and this condition here will be true as long as index is less than 3 in this case because I've got 3 URLs that I added in my constructor here and if it's equal to 3 or greater than 3 this condition will be false to say there isn't a next URL to look at. Now the next method it has to increment my index so let's do that to start with so I don't forget and it has to return a string and uh, the string is going to be a string representing the object that I'm currently looking at and uh, it also yeah it also has to wind forward to the next object so that's why I'm incrementing index here but before we increment it we need to return the current object and I'm going to return here the actual downloaded HTML of each of these URLs so to do that, uh, and this isn't specific in any way to collections, but I'll just create a bit of code here. I'll create a URL object, URL which equals URLs dot get, um, and I'll pass the index there to my linked list to get the URL that my current index here is pointing at. And let's add the import for URL, Control Shift O, and then click on this and um, Oh, yeah, what am I doing? I actually need to say equals new URL because um, I need to pass the string version of the URL to the constructor of my URL object. And um, now I can surround with try catch because that throws a malformed URL exception. And now I can go ahead and download the HTML. And to do that, I need to create a buffered reader so I need to say buffered reader let's call this br equals new buffered reader and my buffered reader is going to map a input stream reader sorry it's going to wrap did I say wrap or map it's going to wrap an input stream reader like this um, so new input stream reader and the, the input stream reader is going to wrap um, the return value of URL dot get input stream. So let's say here URL dot uh, sorry dot open stream. And I'll just add the input so with Control Shift O. And now we'll have a, a error here because this throws I/O this throws I/O exception somewhere along the way. I think this open stream does. So let's just change this to an exception so I can catch them all in one catch block. And I could do something more interesting and more user friendly than just throw just print a stack trace here but I'll just leave this here because this is not kind of um, really anything to do with what we're what I'm trying to show you here uh, and now finally I can go ahead and read the URLs so let's create a string builder SB equals new string builder to, to store the lines that I'm going to retrieve of HTML from this website and I'm going to say string line and I'll set that equal to null initially to avoid uninitialized variable warnings and I'll say while line equals br buffered reader dot read line and while that whole thing is not equal to null so I've got this in its own set of brackets here and I'm saying while the line which is read from bufferedreader.readline is not equal to null. Just loop through here and append the line to my string builder like this. And I'll also append a new line character because 
read line discards the new line character, sort of eats the new line character. And after I've finished reading all the HTML that I can, I must remember to close my stream. So I'll say here, yeah, buffered reader dot close, which will close the underlying stream. And finally, down here, after incrementing my index to say that, yeah, I finished with this uh, website, we've, we've already read it now, then, and that this kind of moves my iterator forward to the next URL. Now I can say return string builder dot two string. So I'm finally returning my string. And actually, I need to take this string builder out of the try catch block and declare it up here so that I can now refer to it down here, string builder dot two string. And the very last step here is that I can now, in my iterator method, which has to get my iterator, I can say return new URL iterator. There we go. So it's quite a lot of code. Most of it was just downloading the website, actually. Um, and you can sort of, as long as you know about inner classes, and you've got an idea of what you want to do and what iterator does, you can sort of wing it, really. You just have to um, click on the errors and go to add unimplemented methods. And then the method site has next and next, as long as you understand what they're supposed to do, then it's fairly easy to implement them, relatively speaking. And now let's just output here, sysout URL. Well, this is no longer a URL, it's actually HTML now. So let's say HTML here dot length to see how much data we've downloaded. And then later on, I could output my HTML, but I'll just comment this out for a minute. And what's going to happen now is that whenever I call next on my iterator, it actually, um, so doing for each on an iterator is, is, is actually behind the scenes calling um, this is actually calling next on your iterator from URL library here, as long as that, as long as has next returns true. So behind the scenes, we're going to be calling that next method, even though there's no visible reference to it here. But that's what this kind of for each syntax does, and it's gonna this this is going to execute slowly. So you might want to put it in its own thread in real life, but it's going to retrieve the URLs one by one. It's going to retrieve the HTML from these URLs one by one. And if I run this now, we get this is the number of um, characters that we're returning from those websites. And if I uncomment this, we can actually see the actual HTML from those websites, chunk by chunk, page by page. OK, so that's it for this tutorial. And uh, we strayed a little bit off the topic, in a way, of iterators. But I thought it might be interesting to show you a kind of real example um, and actually doing something that's a little bit interesting, downloading from a website. And in the next tutorial, we're going to probably look at complex data types using collections packages and building up a kind of complex data type, like, for example, a timetable using multiple collections. So join me again then, and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com, where you can also find information about more free videos on programming Android servlets, JSPs, um, on multi-threading, Java Swing, and lots of other stuff. So until next time, happy coding. <laughs>